They Shoot Horses, Don't They, by Horace McCoy. A very, very, very bleak book, and one that has perhaps kind of fallen by the wayside over the years, but may in fact be worth a read. So this book was referenced in the book, the nonfiction book, The Conspiracy Against the Human Race by Thomas Ligotti, which I read and reviewed earlier this year, if you want to check that out. That's also a really bleak book, but a really good book, too. But Thomas Ligotti referenced They Shoot Horses, Don't They, in his book, and the way he made this book out uh, really intrigued me. So ever since I read that book, I've been curious to read this book. And I eventually ordered it and read it in a day, actually, because it's a very brief novel. It can only scarcely perhaps even be called a novel. I believe it was only 121 pages. Uh, so it's not a very big time investment, but it does pack a punch. Uh, big things, small packages, I guess. But So I read it, and this was an experience. It really was. Now, up front, I'm going to say that I'm going to spoil this book because it's impossible, really, to talk about this book without spoiling it, considering that it spoils its own story on page one. It is not a whodunit. It is rather a why done it. That is to say, a murder has been committed, but we know up front who did it, and the the, the bulk of the story is simply um, getting there and explaining what happened, not so much uh, uh, who did it, but again, why they did it. Um, this book is, on the cover, it's advertised as being an example of noir fiction, which I don't really know if it is because I was given to understand that noir fiction was more had to do with like crime fiction like the Maltese Falcon or the Big Sleep or something. This is not a crime novel. Rather this is according to Simone de Beauvoir uh, the America's first existentialist novel. I don't know that I would agree with that assessment but that is pretty high praise. Uh, so, what is this book about? Well, this book takes place in the 1930s during the American Great Depression. Um, and it has to do with a marathon dance contest. Now, if you don't know what that is, you will be forgiven because I did not know that that was even a thing. But what a marathon dance apparently was, was during the Great Depression, people, companies, or whoever um, would organize a dance where people can enter this dance and they have to dance almost continuously until only one couple remains and they get a cash prize which in this book is a thousand dollars and they get fed and they can they get their room and board and meals comped and everything so it's not really that bad of a deal except it is exhausting and kind of maddening but uh, the narrator of this book is Robert Syverton. He is a young man who has come to Hollywood uh, trying to pursue a career as a film director. Um, he meets up with this young woman named Gloria Beatty, who is uh, a contemporary of his who has also run away to Hollywood to pursue a career as an actress and has failed in that endeavor. And it's in the Great Depression, and they're broke, and so they decide to enter this dance competition to try to win a thousand dollars and, you know, get free food and stuff. So they enter the competition, and uh, it's it just as uh, draining and, again, exhaustive as you would imagine. But throughout this competition, Robert comes to realize that Gloria is not your average person. She is very morbid, very glum and depressed, and seems to be obsessed with the idea of dying, even though she, by her own admission, is too cowardly to kill herself because she has already tried that at one point in the past and failed. But she really does not want to be here. And so, after weeks of dancing, because these people had to dance for basically all day long with only brief rest periods and in um, brief periods of re uh, intervals of rest uh, to you know get off their feet or eat or something or go to the bathroom and they had to dance continuously 
for the rest of that time. They could only sleep in brief snatches, and uh, they had to constantly remain in motion or they would be disqualified. And this went on for weeks. So that if that sounds like a maddening prospect, I mean, it does to me, I'm pretty sure it was. So as they go through this competition, um, they kind of come to know each other, and they kind of, Robert comes to realize that Gloria is um, death obsessed. And then at the end, uh, the competition actually gets shut down, and so nobody really wins. And uh, Gloria has just had enough of everything, and she just pulls out a gun, and she's like, yo, can you kill me? And he's like, I, I got you. And so he shoots her in the head, and then that brings us back to the beginning of the book where he is sentenced to be executed himself for the crime of murder. And the title of the book is the last line that he speaks in the book. Whenever, after he shoots um, Gloria, he utters the line, when the police ask why he did it, they shoot horses, don't they? Because he recalled a memory of growing up on his grandfather's farm where they had to shoot a horse that had broken its leg. And so it equates, you know, human life is just as worthless kind of as that of an animal. But that's the, the, the arc of this story, such as it is, because again, it is a very brief novel. Um, but it's also a very ingenious novel, and it does a lot with a little. So uh, also Horace McCory was actually a, I guess he was a bouncer or something at one of these dance contests, which uh, they don't do anymore, thankfully, because that sounds kind of horrifying, but he actually worked at one of these dance competitions in the 1930s. So this is written with authenticity, with firsthand experience. So it's pretty, I guess, true to what this event, this kind of event was actually like. But anyway, it uses the dance motif as a metaphor for life. That is, it is a dance. And if you stop, then you're disqualified just as the participants are in this competition. You dance for money, you dance for fame, you dance for whatever impetus will keep you on the floor. And it's it's really a pretty it's a really a pretty witty metaphor that this book is built around. But again, this book is really, really bleak. But it's also very unique in that it displays, or it's 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 um, a nominal heroine that is Gloria displays characteristics that are almost never associated with heroism in American fiction or any fiction, I suppose. That is nihilism, because nihilism is what this book is really all about. Uh, to Gloria, life is meaningless. Uh, people are just sentient bags of meat whose lives are ultimately without merit or worth, and it would all we would all be better if we could just die. And that is really what she wants to do throughout this book, except as she says at one point in the book, I'm tired of living, but I'm too afraid to die, which is why she has Robert help her out at the end. But uh, she is truly a heroine, and she is one of the most unique characters I think you may encounter in American fiction, if not fiction in general, because it's rare that you see nihilism associated with the protagonist of a work. Usually nihilism is associated with an the antagonist because nihilism is usually perceived in a negative light. Um, but not so in this book. Gloria is actually a really great character, and she is a character who you definitely get behind, or at least who I got behind and really kind of rooted for, even if I was just rooting her on towards oblivion, which is really what she wanted. But in this book, she really takes no shit off anybody, and she dishes a lot of it out because she is really adept at calling out the bullshit that she sees and seeing through the fake veneer of society and everything around her because she has no pretensions. She has no illusions. She is seeing things in a stark and naked light, and uh, she is kind of tired of it all, but she's not afraid to call it like it is. And there are some really great scenes in this book involving her where she says some 
rather interesting things. By the way, this book is a lot more raw and unfiltered than I thought it would be, given the time period in which it was written. Again, that just goes to show you that books were not, or oftentimes were not, hampered by the same constraints as like television or radio or anything was. Uh, you could write more than you could photograph, I guess, uh, because this book goes some places that I didn't think it would go. There's a lot of discussion about like abortion. There's a lot of discussion about like menstruation and, you know, just kind of topics that I thought, given the, the era, were probably a little taboo. But this book went there. And so it was kind of a brave, ballsy little book, actually. And I really respected it. But once again, this book is not a feel-good book. It is not cheery by any means. It is a real downer, but it asks some hard questions, and it by the time you get to the end, you're kind of hard-pressed to see things in any other light than the way that the book is showing them to you. That is, maybe everything is just a meaningless dance that we dance, that we dance like uh, trained monkeys for peanuts or whatnot, and maybe the bravest are the ones who just don't want to do it anymore, like Gloria is, because this is, this may be the first true nihilistic hero that I've ever read in any book, certainly in an American book. Like, you know, there are some characters like Captain Ahab and Moby Dick or something that are the pro, the kind of well, I don't think Captain Ahab is the protagonist, but he's, well, he is the protagonist, but he's not a hero. But the protagonist in certain books, like in Moby Dick, do embody rather extreme viewpoints and uh, attitudes which aren't really the norm or accepted, but never so far as in they shoot horses, don't they? Because, again, this is the first time I've ever seen a truly nihilistic hero, because Gloria is the hero. She has a great degree of agency in this book. Uh, she kind of makes uh, certain, she does make some real decisions in this that kind of impact certain things. I mean, she convinces Robert to join her in this competition, and uh, it's her that you're really kind of rooting for, even though you know that, you know, right up front from the first page that she's going to die. Uh, you're kind of actually rooting for her to get there because you're seeing this as kind of she sees it. It's just a gallery of meaningless nonsense that really people would be better off if they didn't have to go through. And again, a very extreme viewpoint, but one that is kind of seductive in when you're, at least when you're reading this book. Now, in terms of the negatives of this book, the writing was not that great. It could have been written better. Uh, there were some odd choices. There were a whole lot of paragraphs in this book that ended with ellipses that didn't really need to end with ellipses. It, it was some weird decisions that Horace McCoy made, but it's not badly written, but I think there could have been a whole lot more put into this. The characters in this book, besides Robert and Gloria, who are the two principal ones, they're not that great other than those two. They're pretty thin, but it's it, this book is going for speed. This is definitely not um, a book that was trying to you know, overstuff itself or reach beyond its grasp. It is lean, it's mean, and it packs a punch, like I said, uh, but it does that very briefly and very succinctly. And uh, overall, to rate they shoot horses, don't they? I'd probably give it like a B minus. I think I'd give it a B minus. Uh, there were definitely areas where it could have been better, but overall, it really did hit hard, and it's a very unique book in the positions that it takes and the stances that it takes on certain issues, mainly life itself. And it really was constructed around a very ingenious metaphor, and I can always appreciate that. Um, and I'm really just glad that I read this book now because it really is kind of a unique experience and one that uh, not a lot of other books, I, I, can't, I can't compare this to a lot of other books actually. So it's, again, it's pretty unique. But yeah, They Shoot Horses, Don't They by Horace McCoy. Have you read They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Or have you seen the film that apparently was made in either the 60s or the 70s based on this book starring Jane Fonda? 
Uh, I haven't seen that. I would kind of like to, but um, never had a chance to watch that. But if you've read the book and or seen that film based on it, let me know down in the comments what you thought and uh, whether you have agreed or disagreed with any of my takes on the book here today. And uh, if you have not read They Shoot Horses, Don't They, you might consider giving it a try. It's definitely not a feel-good book, like I said, but it's one that really does kind of make you think, and it really does make you sympathize with a certain viewpoint and a certain type of character that you may not have thought that you ever would or could. And so it kind of is worth a go, if only for that, I would say. And as always, if you have enjoyed anything you've seen or heard here today, remember to like, subscribe, help the channel out a little bit. I would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, peace.